God bless your Facebook and YouTube once I get this video uploaded. This is Elder Marvin Lewis coming to you live from the Evergreen Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, located at 1138 West Center Street. Um, we are getting ready to go into our one-hour prayer ministry. Uh, but first of all, as usual, I do about a 10 to 15, sometimes 20-minute short talk or teaching about whatever the Lord has placed on my heart. And usually it's a subject that goes um, in line with prayer. I, To give my short testimony, I truly praise and thank God for, for my being here. It never fails regardless of what has happened during the week. The closer I get to Tuesday night for this prayer ministry, I can feel the anointing. I can feel an anticipation building. Today I was preparing my notes for the short series we're going to do on fasting starting tonight and I could just feel the spirit of the Lord and over and over God is just confirming that Tuesday night at six o'clock is his divine appointment with me and with whoever feels led of the Lord to join in or to watch the video before I go into uh, my short teaching on fasting well first of all I want to say Bishop Van has the church looking just beautiful. I walked in, his appreciation is coming up, I believe starting at the end of this week and into next week. Forgive me, Bishop, if the dates are wrong. And it was all rearranged, and it kind of threw me a little bit because I had my little routine laid out, and I had to kind of find the things that I usually use from the church for the prayer ministry. And, but it's, and I'm sitting here in one of the mother's chairs that wasn't here before, so, Mother Lola, if this middle chair is yours, it's going to be real anointed after this prayer tonight. You might get one of those Holy Ghost shocks when you sit in it. But anyway, in follow-up to last week, I, I concluded my short teaching or my short exhortation concerning Azusa Street. In addition to the videos that I posted at my link, um, tinyarrow.com, my prayer front slash, well, right slash, my prayer ministry. Um, in, in addition to the videos that I posted there and the books that I shared, I meant to also share that if you want to do a more involved study about Azusa Street and just really, it, it's very fascinating. You can go to Wikipedia, W-I-K-I-P-E-D-I-A dot com, it's the online encyclopedia of the internet, a free encyclopedia. And you can look up these different subjects. Look up Azusa Street Revival, A-Z-U-S-A. There's a whole long article on that. William Seymour, S-E-Y-M-O-U-R, who I stated in the last video was the father of the Azusa Street Revival. Look up Charles Parham. P-A-R-H-A-M, I couldn't think of his first name on the last video, but it's Charles Parham, P-A-R-H-A-M. Look up Charles Harrison Mason, or C.H. Mason. Bishop C.H. Mason, as you know by now, was the founder of the Church of God in Christ. Look up Church of God in Christ. They do an extensive, they cover the history of Bishop Mason, the history of the Church of God in Christ, the history of these different subjects that I'm giving. Look up Garfield Thomas Haywood, also known as G.T. Haywood. He was the first presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, which I believe was one of the first organizations that incorporated as a result of Azusa Street. I might be incorrect. But look up Garfield Thomas Haywood, or G.T. Haywood, Garfield is spelled G-R-F-I-E-L-D. And like I said, he was the first presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World that gave birth to a lot of other Pentecostal organizations. Um, look up the Assembly of God. The Assembly of God came out of, there was a split, and you'll read about it, when you read about the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World or the Assembly of God. But out of this split, they, um, in which 
um, I'll put it like this. There was a certain theological issue that came up. <laughs> and the Pentecostal assemblies of the world went with the scriptures concerning this theological issue. Uh, the group of ministers who did not agree with this split, and they were a bunch of white ministers. Sadly, race played a role in the early, Pentecost, in early Pentecostal movement of the 20th century. And the, this group of ministers separated from the Pentecostal assemblies of the world and temporarily was licensed under Bishop Mason of the Church of God in Christ for I think maybe a year or so until they decided to separate and establish the Assembly of God or Assemblies of God. So look up Assembly of God, A-S-S-E-M-B-L-Y. And also look up United Pentecostal Church International, also known as the UPC. And what you'll find, especially when you read the history of the Assembly of God and the United Pentecostal Church, and a whole lot of UPC folks don't know this, but in a sense, the Church of God in Christ is the grandmother church of the UPC. I'm going to say that again. A lot of people, a lot of UPC people don't know it. But in a sense, the Church of God in Christ is the grandmother church of the UPCI because one of the churches that was involved in the merger that created the UPC came out of the Assembly of God, whereas the founders of the Assembly of God had been licensed by the Church of God in Christ under C.H. Mason for a short season. So I just thought I would share that. So if you want to do further, like I said, if you're a bookworm like me, if you want to do further research or reading um, on Azusa Street, not only do you have the, not only do you have the um, films that are in my link, uh, my, in my, my prayer ministry link, you can also go to wikipedia.com and look up these different subjects. The Azusa Street Revival, William Seymour, Charles Parham, Charles Harrison Mason or C.H. Mason, Church of God and Christ, Garfield Thomas Haywood or Bishop G.T. Haywood, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, Assembly of God, and the United Pentecostal Church International. Those were the, some of the first movements that came out of Azusa Street or were a part of it, um, if, I'm, um, if I'm correct. There are many, many others, but it makes a very fascinating reading. I just spent one evening just looking up all these different subjects and kind of connecting the dots between the trail of the different movements and organizations, and it really revealed a lot to me of what happened back then. Now, I'm already eight minutes into my time. I'm going to, this, uh, uh, the prayer ministry is probably going to start going about an hour and a half just covering the information that the Lord puts on my heart to share. But we're going to deal with fasting. And for those who don't know, fasting is simply a time in which we abstain from food and or water or liquids for a short for a period of time anywhere from 24 hours to 3 days um, to devote ourselves to seeking the face of God prayer or whatever it is you have on your heart you want to take before the Lord before i forget if uh, if you're watching on YouTube if you open up the description of this video you will see a link, tinyearl.com, right slash, practical fasting. tinyearl.com, right slash, practical fasting. It is a guideline that, a, a, a two-page guideline God has given me for doing a 24-hour absolute fast. Now, you can read it and you can adjust it to 
your needs, your body, your situation. You don't have to do a full 24-hour absolute fast unless you feel led of the Holy Ghost. Um, you can go until noon or 3 or 6, however long um, the Lord gives you. But I'm just sharing that link in case I forget to mention it along with this teaching. So fasting is a period of time, usually anywhere from 24 hours to 3 days, in which we go without food and or water in order to devote ourselves to prayer, ministering to the Lord, Bible study, worship. You're basically, in a sense, crucifying this flesh. And you're building up your inner man, your spiritual man. You know, the Bible tells us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And I had never heard, the, heard it put this way before, but one time I was talking with Mother Atwater, and she was like, Brother Marvin, when you sacrifice, and I was like, sacrifice, and she continued in it on me, oh, okay, she's talking about fasting. And as I thought about it, yes, sac uh, fasting is our sacrifice to the Lord. I so want to get into my teaching, but I, I've... Um, I'm going to divide my teaching into three short lessons because there's a powerful type and foreshadow of fasting and prayer in the Old Testament, but I'm going to be patient and I'm going to save it. So fasting, first of all, is a period of time in which we go without food and or drink for a period to devote ourselves to prayer, uh, ministry, ministry of the uh, ministering to the Lord, uh, Worship, seeking the face of God, whatever we, we might have a need, we need of the Lord. There are numerous instances where people had a certain need from God or they had an emergency situation. And the children of Israel would fast. Sometimes their enemies wanted to come and destroy them. And they would go on a fast as a nation and pray and seek God for deliverance. And God would miraculously deliver them from the enemy. Um, when you go to that document on practical fasting, you're going to see two links. I'm going to go on ahead and share these books here while I'm thinking about it so I won't forget. One book is, it's a very small book by Derek Prince, simply called Fasting. I was blessed to find the PDF online. So when you go to that fasting document that will be in the description of this video on YouTube, just click on it and it will open the PDF, um, Derek Prince Fasting. Very small book as you see, but it, it really deals with fasting in depth and shares some very, 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 very powerful spiritual principles on fasting that I did not, I was not aware of. Um, sometimes when you're in fasting, when you're fasting and in prayer, you might go into spiritual warfare. Now, it is not as popular as it was when I was growing up. But, and you've heard me doing it here in prayer, you know, pleading the blood of Jesus. And you might be wondering, why is Elder Lewis pleading the blood of Jesus? What that's about? Where does that come from? There is a very powerful book. I believe this book was published back in 1973 called The Power of the Blood. It is by H.A. Maxwell White. And it's published by Whitaker House. Thank the Lord, I was able to find the PDF of this book online also. So it is when you go to that practical fasting document, near the end of the document, it's just two pages. But near the end, you will see the link for this book, The Power of the Blood. My spiritual mother, Joyce Marie Dixon, introduced me to this book back in... 1995 when I was attending her church Agape Agape Love Agape Love uh, Deliverance Church and I read this book it changed my life you know in a, in Church of God in Christ you know growing up in, in, in the church you know I, I knew about you know uh, Jesus Christ being our perfect sacrifice I knew that we would plead the blood in prayer we would plead the blood against the enemy or against the attacks of the devil but I did not know everything that was behind it, or even where it come from, how it originated. Because we really don't see the practice of pleading the blood 
in the scriptures, although there are types and foreshadows, um, there are types and foreshadows of it. So when you um, click on the link, the power of the blood in the practical fasting document, it will open this book. This book will change your life and cause you to look at the blood of Jesus in a totally different way. Jesus is sacrificed on Calvary. It, 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 will, it will raise your level of knowledge for spiritual warfare and countering the attacks of the enemy. It will do so many things. And once again, I introduced this book last video, but I'm going to mention again, Shut In and Win by Mamie Sconyers Leonard, L-E-O-N-A-R-D. She deals with fasting and prayer as, you know, a definite component of shut in, and she gives some very good information um, concerning fasting. So, like I said, um, fasting is a time in which we abstain from food and or drink for a period of time to devote ourselves to prayer, seeking the face of God, ministering to the Lord, really getting into the depths of God's word, um, listening to gospel music, just doing all the things to build up your spiritual man, and you are fasting or abstaining from natural food and drink. Basically, you're feeding your spirit with spiritual food and drink, and you're abstaining from natural food and drink because you are weakening this flesh. Now, as I was reading the book by Derek Prince about fasting, he says that when we fast, we renounce the natural for the supernatural. And I can see that. But I would prefer to say we invoke the supernatural over the natural. Because when you fast, and here I go, I'm going ahead of myself, getting a, you know my, my teaching for next week. But when you fast, your prayers come before God in a way that he, for, for lack of better, for lack of, not, not that the Lord would ever, you know, ignore your prayers, but when you fast and you go before God with a sincere heart, you humble yourself before fasting. And let me um, uh, be specific about that because in Jesus' day, the Pharisees fasted and it was not acceptable to God. It was not pleasing to God. Um, forgive me, saints, I forgot to unlock the door. Well, pray, well, I, I'm going start it now, I guess. You know, if somebody needs to get in, I guess they'll, they'll knock on the door. But anyway, the Pharisees would fast, and it was not a fast that was pleasing to God. Um, even in Isaiah 58, God said, this is the fast I have chosen. Uh, there are people of other religions who fast. Believe it or not, in the occult, they fast. But we're not talking about that kind of fasting. The kind of fasting we're talking about is when we humble ourselves before God and abstain from food and water for a period of time to devote ourselves to seeking the face of the Lord. Because you can get lifted up and get prideful and fast, and that fast will not be acceptable. I had a situation last week, and it was kind of funny, where it's like everything just shut down. I couldn't feel the unction. I couldn't feel, you know, I, I was trying to be in the practice of, of fasting before I would do prayer ministry. And I, I, I couldn't fast. I couldn't get a, you know, I, when, when, when I fast, I always pray and ask God to help me and give me to fast. I like to feel that spirit of consecration. Otherwise, I don't want to just be going without food or water. And, you know, I like to feel that unction to fast. And God has been doing that for me each week. But I think it was last week or a week, but week before everything just shut down, I couldn't feel the unction, the anointing. I was like, Lord, has the prayer ministry served its purpose? Am I supposed to continue with this? I didn't know what was going on. And as hard as I tried... I could not do a fast. <laughs> and I, I got really concerned. And so I came to the church, you know, when I started, at, when, you know, it's like everything was just spiritually dead. And I didn't understand what was going on. 
But then when it came to Tuesday, when, on Tuesday I started to feeling a little flicker of a flame, so to speak. And the closer it got to prayer, I started feeling a little bit more of that unction for the prayer ministry. And I was like, Lord, you're going to have to help me tonight because I'm, I'm not really feeling any kind of unction or urge or anything. And so when I walked in the church, I then began to come back to life. And then when I started prayer, you know, ministering to the Lord, singing, uh, it was the first time I did uh, Yes, Lord. I began to feel that, like those saints say, that, that, that prayer wheel turning. And that was one of the most powerful prayer meetings of the videos that I've experienced. And after prayer meeting, you know, you all can tell all of this was going on or had happened. But when I got home that night... And I was thinking about, Lord, why did I go just that whole week? I couldn't fast. I couldn't do any of the things that I usually do in preparation for the prayer ministry. And the Lord spoke to me and let me know. He said, Marvin, your fasting is for your benefit, not my benefit. He said, your fasting is for you, not me. I'm, I can do what I'm going to do with you, whether you fast or not. But your fasting is for your consecration. Because I will admit, I had, I wouldn't say I'd got a little proud, but I'd got a little self-assured like, ooh, the Lord had gave me this prayer ministry and he's anointing me and he's using me and I'm getting an average of 50 views a week on YouTube. I wouldn't say I had my chest stuck out, but I, I became a little, I guess like they say, uh, I wouldn't say a little proud, but they used to say godly proud or wh whatever. But out of that, God began to deal with me that we are not only to seek to be anointed, but also to be consecrated. See, when God, and you know, I, I still haven't gotten to my, my um, teaching on fasting. But you know what? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the flow of the Holy Ghost here. We're going to get to the teaching next week if the Lord say that. But this is just an introduction to the teaching, so I guess this would be a four-part series. But anyway... God let me know that because of the anointing, our anointing will always work in the area of ministry. You know, God has called me. He's anointed me to do this prayer ministry. So he's going to do what he is going to do through the work that he's given me to do. But he said that, but one of the things he taught me out of this experience is that beyond my calling and my anointing, is to seek to be consecrated, to have a consecration to go with the anointing that God has given me. See, the anointing comes from the Lord, but we have to consecrate ourselves. And I know of, you know, quite a few ministers who go out off, off of their anointing. They teach, they preach, they pastor, they shepherd, they do the wonderful works of God because that is their anointing. But personally, the consecration is not or may not always be there. And then God spoke to me. He said something that really blew me away, and I posted this on my Facebook page. Um, I put on there, we have many anointed ministers, but not enough consecrated ministers. And I said, seek to not only to be anointed, but also be consecrated, because in the end, it's not going to be your anointing that saves you, but it's going to be your consecration. There is a parable where Jesus said, you know, people are going to come before him and say, Lord, did we not do many Wonderful works in your name. Did we not cast out demons and heal the sick and all? And Jesus is going to say, get from me. I know you not, you workers of iniquity. And that scripture baffled me for years since my childhood. Why would Jesus say he didn't know them when he's God? He's omniscient. But then just recently when God was dealing with me about this, he took me to the scripture in James. Notice he called them workers of iniquity. They were anointed, but they weren't consecrated. They hadn't departed from iniquity. In the book of James, it says, the Lord knoweth them. Now, Jesus said, I know, get thee from me. I know you not, you workers of iniquity. 
He said, I know you not, but at the same time, he knew enough about them to call them workers of iniquity. But in James, he said, uh, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So these individuals, they were anointed, but they did not have the consecration. Otherwise, if they have the consecration, the Lord Jesus would have known them and rewarded them for their works, rather than telling them to depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Well, like I said, I thought I was going to be starting the teaching on fasting tonight, but I gave you a very short introduction. I guess this is going to be a four-part series. We're already 25 minutes into our time, so I'm going to stop right there with the teaching, and I'm going to read the names on our prayer list, and then we're going to go into our prayer. Forgive me, y'all. Excuse me for a quick second while I unlock this door. Yeah, like I said, when I walked in, um, everything was rearranged and kind of threw me out of my little routine and I thought I had done everything and forgot to lock the front door in case somebody shows up who wants to pray um, in person with, with us. Now, on our prayer ministry request, we're going to be praying um, for all of my Facebook friends and followers who are experiencing illness, financial need, living with a medical diagnosis, especially HIV, or who have experienced the death of friends and or family members, also for members in private groups who have requested prayer and for everyone who views this video. I have seen so, you know, quite a few more posts this week. People asking for prayer because of the unexpected loss of a loved one. Uh, even tonight, in one of my private groups, um, there was someone encouraging people to be careful about who you date or who you go with, or I'll, I'll just say it, have a hook a hook up with, because uh, apparently his one of his one of his best friends or closest friends got with somebody and was found dead shot. So uh, we really want to be praying for people who are going through, you know, grief because of the death or loss of a loved one or the especially the um, <clears throat> unexpected, unexpected loss. And like I, I did say, if you're viewing this video, you're going to be included in prayer. So as I'm praying at some point, I will come back to the prayer list or if I don't, come back to the prayer list, depending on the leading of the Holy Ghost, um, just remember these individuals as I re read their names. We want to be in prayer again for my next oldest brother, Samuel Davis. He's scheduled for surgery in December. Um, he's been having long-term health complications since he completed service in the military years ago. Um, when I first began the prayer ministry, we were praying for some complications he had, and then looked like things got okay, but it looks like he's going to, he's scheduled for surgery, but we believe God to be a healer. Like they say, he'll be a doctor in the sick room, you know, a surgeon in the operating room. We're going to believe God to be a healer. And I'm going to be praying for my brother and believing God to heal him once and for all so that he will not have, have to have the surgery. Um, if the Lord's will. Um, we have an update. We have been praying for Elon Ellis of Flora, Mississippi, because he was having severe pain from lung cancer. Well, we have an update, which is sad, but at the same time, glorious. I found out from his half-brother that he has passed. Um, after we prayed for him last prayer meeting, I checked that week, and he had, he had just passed the day before. But he transitioned praying and praising the Lord. 
So his half-brother said it was not a sad transition. He went into eternity praying and praising the Lord. The last breaths that he took were giving praises to God. So even though we want to be praying for his family, and even though it, it, it's sad, you know, his, his loss is sad, he's no longer suffering. And just to think that he went into eternity praising and magnifying God and praying. He wasn't afraid. He, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't in pain or in agony. He, that he went praising and magnifying God. And I have heard of instances of people doing that. Some people um, speaking in tongues as the... Ah, thank you, Jesus. Let me stop. Some people speaking in tongues as the Lord took them from this life into the next. My God. Lord, let me stop before I get happy, before we um, get into the prayer. Uh, so we want to be praying for the family of Elon Ellis of Florida. My God, I felt that anointing when I shared that. Lord Jesus... We want to be praying for the family of Elon Ellis of Florida, Mississippi, who did pass. Next, we want to keep the family of Bishop Eugene Ringer and the Faith Temple Church of God in Dayton, Ohio. We want to keep them up in prayer as they mourn the passing of their pastor and bishop and as his family mourns his passing. He was 84, and I did not find out how many years he had been in ministry but he has gone from labor to reward at the age of 84. The scripture says, Precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. And when I read that as a child, I'm, you know, I'm teaching, I'm supposed to be reading the, <laughs> reading the prayer request. Y'all, y'all bear with me. I, I, I'm feeling the presence of God in a very special way tonight in this church. Thank you, Jesus. But anyway, it said, Precious. In the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And that didn't mean, oh, that's just so precious. It comes from a word that means costly. Whenever a soldier who's been on the battlefield for a long time leaves this life, it is costly to the Lord. But we thank God that just as one generation is passing on into eternity, God has another generation coming up behind them. God is going to always leave. God will never leave himself without a witness. So once again, we want to be praying for Bishop Eugene Ringer, praying for the family of Bishop Eugene Ringer and the Faith Temple Church of God. Next, we want to continue to keep Pastor Charles and his spouse Tommy up. Not only that God will continue to bless them and help them and strengthen them as they do the work of the ministry and affirming and inclusive work of the ministry in Dallas, but also that he will keep them encouraged as Tommy's job comes to an end in November. We are believing that God, I'm believing and praying, even though we're praying for Tommy a new job, I'm believing and praying that Tommy, for the Lord to bless Tommy with a new source of income. Because it may be a job, or the Lord might bless him with his own business. I'm not going to limit or constrict God, but we want to keep Pastor Charles and his spouse Tommy up in prayer. We want to continue to keep Sister Donna Thompson up in prayer. She's also a member of Grace Oasis, and I do attend Grace Oasis online. And she's the mother of Pastor Charles. We do have an update. Um, she had lost her job due to some health issues. And she did have a job prospect. As a matter of fact, I messaged her yesterday. And she said she had an interview scheduled for today. So we're going to be believing God that he will give her the desires of her heart concerning the job. Because the job would have, I think, the same or around the same or better benefits than she had before. The same benefits that she had before. And I believe that was her concern. She did not want to lose the certain benefits that she had on the other job that she lost. Lastly, we want to keep Sister Cynthia in Austin, Texas up in prayer. She had a very invasive spinal surgery. She's been recovering, but she's in a lot of pain. So we want to keep her up in prayer. Prayer that, you know, God will heal her. 
God will remove the pain so that after she recovers to a point, she can start her rehabilitation. So those are our prayer requests for tonight. And like I said, I'll try to come back to these prayer requests during the prayer uh, depending on the leading of the Holy Ghost, if I don't make it back to the prayer request, you have the names of the people, and if you'll write them down and include them on your personal prayer list, um, we would all really appreciate it. They, you know, as as many, it would help for to have as many people praying for them, um, along with any other needs that you have, um, as possible. So we're about to go into prayer. In my other videos, I did My Soul Loves Jesus, but um, I found that since when I just go into prayer doing Yes, Lord, it's like I, I can get into that mode of prayer faster. So we're going to do Yes, Lord, and then ministering to the Lord, and then going to prayer as usual. And as I always say, um, we start out prayer with about 15 to 20 minutes of singing, this is called ministering to the Lord. And we're going to talk about that in the next two um, talks that I have before we pray. But we minister to the Lord. And in my first two videos, if you go all the way back to the first video, first prayer ministry video, the first and the second, I kind of deal with ministering to the Lord. How ministry to the Lord is our first ministry even before we minister to man. So we minister to the Lord in singing the song, um, the Old Church of God in Christ prayer song, Yes, Lord. And then we go into prayer. And one of the beauties of these prayer songs, and I've introduced three of them on the different videos, is there, there are no set lyrics. You just maintain the melody and you sing whatever God puts in your heart. So let us begin. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. yes Lord. You 
you've watched over us. You've watched over us. You've watched over us. You've watched over us. You've kept us safe. 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 We praise your name. 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 We bless you, Lord. 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 We magnify thee. 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 Come in, Lord. 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 We need you, Lord. 
without you. We can't make it 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 without you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. In our hearts, in our hearts, in our hearts, in our hearts, in our hearts. In our souls, in our souls, in our souls, in our souls, in our souls. In our souls, in our minds, in our minds, in our minds, in our minds, in our minds. Jesus, 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 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank you, God. Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you. Father, we magnify you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we give you the glory. Jesus, we give you the honor. Jesus, we give you the praise. We magnify you, God. Lord, we know there's no other like you. No other God in all the earth. Father, we just bless your name. Father, we just worship your name. Father, we just magnify your name. Father, we just give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. With every breath that we can breathe, God. We give you the glory. With every beat of our heart, God. We give you the glory with the blood that's flowing warm in our veins. We give you the glory hey, in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and we thank you. God, we magnify you. God, we worship your holy name. We just give you all the glory, Lord. We just honor and praise you. We just magnify you. We extol thee, O God. We adore you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Not just for what you've done for us. But who you are to us. Hey, we thank you that you are God. And there is none else. We thank you, Jesus, that you've allowed us. To come to know you in the pardon of our sins. We thank you Jesus that you've allowed us. To come to know you. In the baptism in your name. Jesus we thank you that you've allowed us. To come to know you. Through the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Father we give you the praise. Father we give you the glory. Father, we give you the honor. We thank you, Jesus, even for this divine privilege. This honor above all honors. This privilege above all privileges. This benefit, God, above all benefits. Just to come before you. Just to say your name. Just to praise your name. Just to give you all the glory. Just to commune and fellowship with you. Through this prayer ministry. Father we give you all the glory. Father we give you all the praise. Father we give you all the honor. Hey, we thank you Jesus because we know. That you're an ever present help in the time of need. God you said in your word. That you would never leave us nor forsake us. But you would be with us even to the end of the world. God, we give you praise right now. God, we thank you right now. God, we magnify you right now. Jesus, we worship your holy name. We thank you, God, for always being with us. For never, never leaving us or forsaking us. Father, we thank you for giving us strength in the midst of our weakness. Father, we thank you for giving us power when we needed power. Father, we thank you for giving us joy in the midst of sorrow. Father, we thank you as the old saints used to say. 
for being our hope for tomorrow. Father, we thank you for giving us peace in the midst of confusion. Father, we thank you for giving us joy in time of sorrow. Lord, we just give you praise. Lord, we just give you glory. Lord, we just give you honor. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're not a God who's afar off, but a God who's right there with us at all times. Even, Father, when we can't feel you. Even, Father, like they say, when we can't trace you. God, we know that you're there by faith in every situation, in every circumstance, in every need, in every adversity, in every attack of the enemy. Lord, we know that you're right there in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you the praise because you said in your word, that no weapon that is formed against us would prosper. Hey. And every tongue that would rise up against us in judgment. You said that you would condemn. Hey. You said this is our heritage. As the saints of God. And our righteousness is of you. Jesus we praise you. Jesus we thank you. Jesus we bless you. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we worship your holy name. Jesus, we give you all the glory. Jesus, we give you all the honor. Jesus, we give you the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. We just thank you, Jesus, for your many blessings and your many mercies. Your blessings, God, that are too numerous to consume. Lord, I've heard some preachers say that if they had a thousand years, they wouldn't have time enough to, that still wouldn't be time enough to give you all the praise that you're worth. But God, I'll say if we had a whole eternity, we still couldn't give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. That's do your name. Jesus, we just love you. Jesus, we just thank you. Jesus, we just praise you. Jesus, we just glorify you. Jesus, we just lift up your name. In the name of Jesus. And Father, as we come before you, we come confessing every sin, every evil and every wrong. Father, we confess every evil word that's proceeded out of our mouth. Father, we confess every evil thing our hands have handled. Father, we confess every evil thing we've looked up on. And every evil thing that we've listened to. Lord, we confess every evil motive and intent of our heart. Any desire, motive, or intent that was not of you. Jesus, we confess it to you right now. Father, we ask that you wash us in your blood. Father, we ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For you said in your word that if we would confess our sins, you are willing and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we glorify you. Jesus, we lift your name. Father, we just give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us together once again. Not only in this place, but virtually online. Father, we send up a special prayer. For every person under the sound of my voice. For those who are watching live. And for those who will watch the video. Father we ask that you would touch us. One by one and name by name. 
Move God within and touch every household and family represented. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you would have your way. You know our every prayer, God. You know our every need. You know our every situation and circumstance. Father, you know the blessing that we come in need of. Father, you know the situation and the circumstance that we come in need of. Lord Jesus, move by your Spirit. Lord Jesus, move by the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, Father, in the situations. Have your way, God, in the circumstances. Have your way, God, in every prayer that is prayed. And every need that's expressed in the name of Jesus. Bring out of it, God, your will. Bring out of it, God, your plan. Bring out of it, God, your purpose in the name of Jesus. For, Lord, you said in your word that all things work together for the good of them who are the called according to your purpose. To them that love you. Who are the called according to your purpose. And truly tonight Jesus we love you. And we are called according to your purpose. In the name of Jesus. Bless us God one by one and name by name. Touch us God in the name of Jesus. Father move upon every situation and every circumstance. In the name of Jesus. Even in the midst of our confusion, God. In the midst of our sickness, God. In the midst of our dilemma, God. In every situation and every circumstance, God. Move by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we ask that where we need peace, you would bring peace. That where we need joy, you would bring joy. That where we need love, You would give us more love. That where we need power. You would give us more power. In the name of Jesus. Father that wherever we stand in need. Whether it be a financial need. Or whether it be a spiritual need God. Or any material need. That you would provide in the name of Jesus Christ. For Lord you said in your word. That you would, you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we magnify you. Jesus, we glorify you. Father, we praise you in advance concerning the need. Jesus, we praise you in advance concerning the need. If it be healing, God, we praise you in advance concerning the healing. If it's deliverance, God, we praise you in advance for the deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we're not going to wait, God, until we see it manifest. But we're going to shout and praise you right now. Even before we see it, God. Even before we feel it, God. Even before we... Receive evidence or verification of it, God. We praise you in advance. In the name of Jesus Christ. For Lord, you said in your word. That faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. And Father, you taught me a long time ago. That the faith itself. Is evidence that the thing is going to be done. Because only you can grant us faith. And you would not give us faith God. If you were not going to do the work. So Father we praise you. Father we thank you. We thank you for the faith to believe right now. Knowing God that you're going to do the work. Because the faith itself is the substance. Faith itself is the evidence. In the name of Jesus. For Lord you said in your word. That whatsoever. Whatsoever we would ask in prayer. Believing. We would receive. In the name of Jesus. 
God, we give you praise right now. God, we thank you right now. God, we magnify you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for all of those viewing and for those who are going to view this prayer ministry video in the name of Jesus. Father, if anyone watches who is not saved, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would bring conviction upon their soul and the faith to believe you to pardon their sins in the name of Jesus. Father, if anyone has not been baptized and received the infilling of the gift of the Holy Ghost, we pray, Father God, that you would give them the faith to believe and receive, even as we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, if there's anyone watching who is backslidden, who for whatever reason walked away, God, from the fellowship of the saints, or even from fellowship with you, that you would stir their heart and their mind. That you would cause them to know that you're waiting for them. Even as the father waited for the prodigal son. That you are waiting God to receive them back. In the name of Jesus. And all they've got to do is say yes to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father if there's anyone praying with us. Who's sick in body. Sick in mind. Sick in their soul or their spirit. God we ask that you would bring healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Bring healing and deliverance God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus we praise you. Lord Jesus we bless you. Lord Jesus we worship you. Lord Jesus we magnify you. Jesus we lift you up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we just ask that you have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our minds. Have your way in our soul. Have your way in our spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray a special blessing upon this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray a special blessing not only upon the house, but for Pastor Van and his family, for the servant and the minister of this house, and his family in the name of Jesus. A special blessing, God, for the members of this church in the name of Jesus. A special blessing, God, for those who support this work in the name of Jesus. Even as they prepare God to honor the man of God through the appreciation services. Father, we pray a special prayer. We pray, God, for a special move of the Holy Ghost. We pray, God, that it will be in a series of appreciation services like no other. And like they've never had in the name of Jesus. Father, we just believe you for a special move of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Even as the guest ministers minister. In the name of Jesus. Even as the different guest churches come together. Father we thank you. For a special move of the Holy Ghost. In this house. In the name of Jesus. And Lord we pray not only for this church. But the churches everywhere. That are open in your name. We pray, God, for the pastors and shepherds everywhere who are pastoring your people according to your, after your own heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for the people who are working and laboring, God, and giving and supporting to keep those churches open and to make those churches a place where the sin sick can come to be healed. Where the empty souls can come to be filled. Where those who are sick in mind and in body can be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we're praying that you would make all of those churches a place where people can experience your presence. Where they can feel your love. And where they can hear your word. In the name of Jesus. 
Father calls us to know that every house of God is a house of prayer for all people. And that there are no exclusions in your house. You don't have a guest list, God, waiting at the door of who can enter and who has to stay out. But you said in your word that your house shall be called a house of prayer for all people in the name of Jesus. And Father, make us not just welcoming, but make us all inclusive in the name of Jesus. That if we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, in the pardon of our sins, regardless, God, of who we are, regardless, God, of who we love or who we've married, that we are to be included in your house in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we praise you. God, we thank you. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we ask that you just have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we just give you the glory. We just give you the praise. We just give you the honor. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we say a special prayer for those on this prayer list. In the name of Jesus. First of all God we pray a special blessing. For those by Facebook friends and followers. Who are experiencing any kind of illness. Any kind of financial need. Those who are living with illness. Those who are living with a medical diagnosis. Especially HIV God. Those who have experienced the death of friends or family members. Even those God we Pray a special prayer, God, for those who posted asking for prayer concerning the unexpected death of loved ones even that I saw on this week in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray not only for them, God, who made the post, but even for the families of those of the deceased in the name of Jesus. That right now, God, you will be their God of comfort. That you will be their God of strength. That you will be their God of help. That you will be their God of power. Father, we pray a special blessing that you would bring all the monies and finances and whatever is needed, God. As they make the financial arrangements for their loved one. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray for the members of the different private groups I belong to who've requested prayer. And as we've prayed earlier, God, for everyone who will view this video, everyone, God, who will come under the sound of my voice through these videos in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for touching my brother Samuel right now. Wherever he's sitting right now, wherever he's laying right now, whatever he's doing right now. Father, we thank you for touching him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, you know the ailments and the illnesses he's been dealing with for so many years, God. Since he completed his service in the military. And now, God, they're saying that he needs another operation after he's already had a few, God. Lord, we ask that you touch him right now. Touch him, God, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, go into his whole digestive system. God, go into his intestines in the name of Jesus. God, you know the source and the cause of the problem. God, we're believing you to work a miracle in the name of Jesus. God, give him a new stomach. God, give him a new set of intestines. God, work a miracle in the name of Jesus. Work a miracle, God, so that even his doctor and the hospital staff will be amazed. And they will even cancel the operation because of the work that you've done. God, we know that you're no short of your word and that you're a God of miracles in the name of Jesus. And Father, we believe you for a special miracle in the name of Jesus. So that you will not have to be cut on again in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we 
pray a special blessing for the family of Elin Ellis and for the half-brother of Elin Ellis who is on this prayer ministry right now. Father, we thank you for giving them strength. Father, we thank you for giving them help. Father, we thank you for giving them encouragement during this time of loss. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the beautiful and the glorious testimony that he didn't enter into eternity in agony. He didn't go into eternity in pain. He didn't go into eternity in doubt or fear. But he transitioned God into the next life. Praying and praising your name. God, I feel a sweep of the Holy Ghost every time I mention it. Lord, we thank you hey, that you took him into the next life with a praise on his lips in the name of Jesus. And now, Father, we pray for all of his loved ones who've been left behind. That you would give them a word of comfort, a word of hope. Give them strength, God, in the name of Jesus. Let everything come together, God, that they need as they make the final arrangements. Even as the family comes together, God, for the funeral and even the repast, God. We pray that you would cause your spirit to be felt in a very special way. Because Elin is now with you in the name of Jesus. Father, we just praise you. Father, we just bless you. Father, we just magnify you. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you said in your word that precious in, is in the sight of the Lord are the death of your saints. Lord, we just praise you. Lord, we just bless you. God, we magnify you. Father, we pray a special prayer for Pastor Charles and his spouse Tommy of the Greater Oasis Ministry of Greater Oasis Ministries in Dallas, Texas. God, you see, the first God, we thank you for blessing them to be so consistent in providing the online worship every Sunday. That's been such a strength and a help and a blessing to me, and it's been where I've been getting my main feeding. Lord, I thank you for those powerful and those deep scriptural messages that you give Pastor Charles who just feeds our soul, God, each Sunday. But Lord, you see the situation that they're facing of Tommy's job ending in November. Lord, you said in your word through, through David, he said, I was once was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And we thank you, God, that they are not forsaken. And we thank you, God, that they will not beg bread. And we thank you, God, for transitioning Tommy into an even better situation. An even better income. If it's your will, God, that it be a job, we thank you for blessing him with an even better job with better benefits. In the name of Jesus. Without the stress, Father, and whatever else he had to deal with in the last job. And Father, if it's other than a job, we thank you for blessing him, God, with either a business or an, an, or an alternative source of income, God. We're not going to limit you in the name of Jesus, but we thank you, God, for supplying their need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, we say a special prayer for Sister Donna Thompson who had lost her job due to illness, God. And we thank you, Father, even for the interview that she had on today. Hmm. Father, I'm just going to believe that after they interviewed her today, that they didn't see the need to interview any other candidates. God, I'm just going to believe in the name of Jesus Christ. For Lord, she expressed that this job would give her the same benefits that she needs. That her past job offered her. Lord we're believing in the name of Jesus. That after they interviewed her own today. That they didn't see a need to interview any other candidates. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
And we're praying and believing God that not only will she have the same benefits that she needed, God, but you will even increase the pay in the name of Jesus. That it will even be a work, a better working environment. That it will not be a toxic environment, God, that will affect her health, God, but it will be a peaceful environment so she can go and do her work, God, receive her paycheck and her benefits, and be well in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask that you look up on Sister Cynthia Austin right now, Sister Cynthia in Austin, Texas right now, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you would touch her on her hospital bed. Father, we thank you for touching her from the crown of her head, even to the soles of her feet. Father, we thank you for alleviating every pain in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for accelerating her healing and even her rehabilitation in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for giving her a healing so that she will never have to be operated on again. In the name of Jesus. Lord we praise you. Jesus we thank you. Jesus we magnify you. Lord we give you the glory. Lord we give you the honor. Lord we give you the praise. Lord we thank you. Jesus we worship your name. Jesus, we worship your name. With these last 14 minutes, God, we just thank you. We just praise you. We just magnify you. Lord, we worship you. We give you the glory. We thank you, Jesus, for how you blessed us. We thank you, Jesus, for how you've kept us. We thank you, Jesus, for how you've taught us. We thank you, Jesus, for how you've brought us. We thank you, Jesus, for how you've kept your angels in camp round about us. We thank you, Lord, for how you've kept us safe. We thank you, Jesus, for how you kept us through each and every night. You didn't allow a thief or a murderer to break in or a fire to break out. We thank you, Jesus, that as we've traveled to and fro and conducted our business, you didn't allow us to get in the path of a stray bullet or in the path of a reckless driver. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for how you even kept me. When I was this week, yesterday, God, as I was about to step off the sidewalk and cross the street, and a woman almost ran the red light, I just stopped God for no reason. I looked at her, God, and it didn't look right. And I stopped and waited. And Lord, she was about to run the red light. And she stopped in the middle of the crosswalk. And Lord, had I continued walking, she, believing that she was going to stop, she would have hit me. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping us sound. Thank you for keeping us at peace. Thank you for keeping us in your will. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping us. As those old saints used to pray. As the apple of your eye and in the hollow of your hand. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just give you the praise. Lord, we just give you the honor. Lord, we just give you the glory. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. And even as I'm praying, God, I see that there's someone under the sound of my voice. It looks like a lady. Hey, it looks like a darker skinned lady. And she's having some kind of illnesses, some kind of sicknesses, God, in her abdomen area, God. I'd be tempted to say in her reproductive among her, around her uterus, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for touching her right now. We thank you for healing her right now.
Father, it looks like she's wearing some kind of light-colored garments with patterns in it. Father, we thank you for touching her right now in the name of Jesus and healing her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for causing the balm of Gilead to flow right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Thank you, God, for giving her a miraculous healing right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know, God, whether or not she's already been diagnosed or if she's been having these complications and afraid or unable to go to the doctor, maybe because of lack of insurance or the cost. But, God, we thank you for giving her a miraculous healing right now. For giving her a miraculous deliverance right now. For healing her at the very root of the sickness, the illness, the ailment, or the infirmity in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, for not allowing it to ever come back in the name of Jesus. God, we come against the spirit of infirmity that has plagued this woman. Who it seems as soon as she would get over one sickness or ailment or illness, God, something else would crop up. We bind and we curse the spirit of infirmity right now in the name of Jesus. We break its hold in Jesus' name and command it to flee and to never return in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we glorify your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus. With the last eight minutes, God, of this prayer ministry, we just worship you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you would have your way. Have your way, God, in our hearts. Have your way, God, in our minds. Have your way, God, in our souls. Have your way, God, in our spirits. Order our steps, God. Ordain our paths. Govern our ways. And establish our goings in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, those of us who are in the valley of decision. Those of us who need to make a decision about a certain issue. You said in your word. In all to trust in you. With all our heart. And to lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways God. To acknowledge you. And you would direct our paths. In the name of Jesus. So Lord we thank you. For directing our paths in the name of Jesus. Concerning every decision. Concerning every choice. In the name of Jesus. Concerning the situation that is before us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord we praise you and we thank you. Have your way God. Have your way Lord Jesus. Father we ask that you would teach us the more. Give us greater wisdom. Give us greater knowledge. Give us greater understanding. Give us greater, give us greater revelation. Insight, God. Prudence and discretion in every matter. But especially as we read and, and as we study your word. Lord, you said that man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And Lord we ask that you would teach us Lord how to seek you in your word. Teach us Lord how to read and study your word. In the name of Jesus. Give us greater wisdom. Knowledge and understanding. In the name of Jesus. Not just to have the knowledge and understanding God. But so that we might know how we are to live according to your word. Help us, Lord, to be doers of your word and not hearers only. In the name of Jesus, even as we hear anointed messages that we know that are sent from heaven, 
whether they be in our churches or even online. We ask God that you would help us not to treat church like it's some kind of form of entertainment, like it's some kind of extracurricular activity or something we do on the side for enjoyment. But help us, Father God, that when we hear your word, to be doers of your word and not hearers only. In the name of Jesus. Father, lead us and guide us. Direct us, God. Order our steps, God. Ordain our paths. Govern our ways. Establish our every going. Lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray and ask that you would open our ears where we are deaf. That we may hear and understand. Father, we pray and ask that you will open our eyes where we're blind, that we may see and perceive. Father, we pray and ask that you will touch our hearts where we are stubborn and disobedient and rebellious. Take out of us, God, the heart of stone and give us, God, a heart of flesh that you might mold us, make us, and shape us according to your will. For, Father, we know that the time is short. And we know that you are soon to come. Even right before I left home, God, Pastor Charles posted about a dream he had had. And you gave me scriptures and I shared those scriptures with him. And apparently they kind of con helped to confirm the dream. But, those, but his dream was in regards to the end time. To the end of days. Father, we pray and ask. That you would give us a mind and a heart to seek your face and not your hand in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray and ask that you would give us a mind to seek to be prepared and ready and wait for when you crack the sky in the name of Jesus. For Lord, so much is in place. Even as we read the words of prophecy in the scripture. There are so many things, God, that at one time we could not fathom how they would happen. Everything is in place now. Even the technology, technology that we could even have imagined, God, is now in place to fulfill the different prophecies of Scripture. But Lord, give us a mind to seek your face and not your hand. And give us a mind to be ready. Help us, God, to be like the five wise virgins who kept oil in their lamp. And don't let us, God, be like the five foolish virgins who allowed their oil to run out in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, help us in the name of Jesus, not only to establish a daily time of prayer and study of your word, but to have a time each week of consecration. For prayer and for fasting. To devote ourselves to seeking your face. In the name of Jesus. And drawing close to you. In the name of Jesus. For Father sadly there's so much entertainment. Going on in the church. But so little prayer and seeking your face. And Father we're, we're living in perilous times. But Lord you promised us in your word. That if we would humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Lord, you said that you would forgive, you would hear from heaven and you would forgive our sins and heal our lands in the name of Jesus. So in addition, God, to the anointing, help us, God, to also seek you for a consecration. In the name of Jesus. For as you spoke to me, Lord, earlier this week. You said in the end, God, it won't be the anointing that saves us. But it will be our consecration. In the name of Jesus. And teach us, Lord, how to humble ourselves and pray. Teach us, Lord, how to consecrate ourselves. Teach us, Lord, how to push the plate back. Teach us, God, how to fast and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Teach us God how to draw close to you. In the name of Jesus. 
not to be seen of men, God. But teach us, Lord, to do it secretly. Because you said in your word that when we pray and fast in secret, you would reward us openly. In the name of Jesus, Father, we just bless you. Father, we just magnify you. Father, we just worship you. God, we give you the glory. Thank you for the touch of the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you for the touch of the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you for your, the move of your spirit right now. Father, we give you the glory and the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Even though, Lord, we've been in prayer for an hour. We're just going to tarry a few minutes longer in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, I feel you moving by your spirit. I feel you touching somebody. I feel you blessing some, somebody. I feel you ministering to somebody. Hey, in the name of Jesus. I feel you ministering to someone, God, who hasn't been able to feel your presence in a while. I feel someone, God, they've been feeling that they've been far from you because they haven't been feeling your presence. But I thank you for touching them right now in the name of Jesus, for causing them to know, God, that you've always been close, even though they couldn't feel you, that you've never left them and you've never forsaken them in the name of Jesus. Even though, God, they thought that they might have left you. We thank you, God, for causing them to know that you never left them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the healing, God, that is going forth right now. Thank you for the deliverance, God, that is going forth right now. Thank you, Jesus, for the move of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for the move of your Spirit. Thank you, God, for bringing that wayward sinner, that wayward backslider, back into the fold in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for causing us to examine our hearts where we've been lazy and where we've been slothful and where we've been unconcerned, God. About your will like we should. Thank you Jesus. For rekindling the fire. That once burned so brightly in our souls. Thank you Jesus. For renewing everything in us. That seems to have grown old. Thank you Jesus. For reviving our spirits. Where we fainted. Where we've given up. Where we've turned loose and let go God. In the name of Jesus, thank you for reviving us in our souls right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for, hey, thank you, Jesus, for causing that person under the sound of my voice who felt, God, that you were done with them, that you were through with them, that you were finished with them. Thank you for calling them, causing them to know right now that you're not done. That you're not finished. That you still got a work for them. That you still got a plan and a purpose for their lives in the name of Jesus. And that all they need to do is to do what they know you told them to do. That thing that they've been drawing back from. That thing that they've been afraid to do out of, out of the fear of man. Thank you God for giving them the faith. Thank you, God, for giving them the courage. Thank you, God, for giving them the holy boldness to do, God, what you told them to do so that they might enter back into their purpose, their destiny, and, yea, even their ministry in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we magnify you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we give you the glory. Jesus, we give you the praise. Jesus, we give you the honor. Lord, we thank you. 
Father, I thank you for the ministering angels that I see even now. Father, I see ministering angels going forth. I don't know the reason and I don't know the purpose. But Father, you know. Thank you, God, for sending your ministering angels, your ministering spirits. In your word, God, you said they are sent forth to minister for those who are the heirs of salvation. Thank you for your ministering angels, God. Thank you for sending forth your ministering angels. Thank you, Jesus, for sending forth your ministering spirits to do the work that you have commanded them to do. In the name of Jesus, you know every situation, God. You know every circumstance, God. You know every need, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for delivering those who are bound. We thank you, Jesus, for lifting every heavy burden. We thank you, Jesus, for causing the oppressed to go free. We thank you, God, for delivering from every addiction in the name of Jesus, for destroying every yoke by the anointing, for breaking every fetter, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, in the name of Jesus, for sending forth deliverance as we pray. Father, we thank you for sending forth salvation, even as we pray. Father, we thank you for sending forth the baptism in the Holy Ghost as we pray. Father, we thank you for reclaiming every backslider as we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for bringing every wayward child home as we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for bringing every divided family back together in love as we pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. Jesus, we worship your name. 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 Jesus, we give you all the glory. Jesus, we give you all the honor. Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise your God. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for meeting us once, once again. Thank you, God, for meeting us not only in this place physically, but thank you, Jesus, for meeting us virtually online. Father, we thank you for meeting those right who are viewing right now. In the name of Jesus who are praying right now, God. And we thank you, God, for a meeting with those who will pray with me through the video later in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we thank you that they will feel your ver the very same presence, the very same anointing, God, that I feel in this sanctuary. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, that they will receive not only the touch that they need, but also the answer to prayer. Whatever reason they came, Lord, whatever reason they logged onto the video for, we thank you that they will receive the answer to their prayer in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we prepare to depart physically and virtually, Lord, we depart not from your presence. Lord, we ask that you would keep us covered under your blood. Lord, we ask that you would keep your angels in camp round about us. Lord, we ask that you would continually to order our every step, ordain our every path, govern our every way, and establish our every going in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for covering us and keeping us and providing for us in the name of Jesus as we are away. And until we come back together again in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you all the praise. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the honor. Jesus, we worship your holy name. Jesus, we magnify your holy name. Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
And we praise and magnify you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your God. Praise your God. Praise your God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I thank the God for another prayer ministry. Looks like we went 10 minutes above, but I try to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And when I feel the Spirit of God moving, and when He starts showing me things that He's doing, I dare not cut off, I dare not interrupt the flow of the Holy Ghost. So once again, this is Elder Lewis coming to you live uh, from the Evergreen Church located at 1138 West Center Street in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with prayer ministry. If the Lord says the same, we will be back here next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And at that time, I will be continuing with the second part of my short series on fasting. And as I always pray and ask, please keep Elder Lewis in your prayers as I keep you in mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, and until we meet again, be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.